Let's start with something we already talked about when we talked about the terms. Let's start with the basic distinction between the resources itself or the resources themselves and the commons as a complex social system. So a collective, collectively used resource, a shared resource does not equal commons. It's important to make a distinction between these two terms. You need to know when you refer to the resource itself, to water or land, because you can put water into a bottle and sell it in the supermarket and you will have clearly a commodity, a privately owned resource and not a commons. And you can use, you can treat water as a commons. So it is important to make the distinction between talking about the resources themselves and talking about the commons. This is a point um, Elinor Ostrom stresses a lot. The second one, a second basic, I would say, another one which is really stressed um, by, by the Elena Ostrom School is that you need to make a distinction between when you talk about the property regime and when you talk about the commons as a complex social system. Because it is important to know that you can have different property regimes within the commons. And it is not so much about the property regime itself, because commons may function with very different sets of property regimes. The basic question here is, how can we gain really ownership in the sense of autonomy, in the sense of the users themselves have the authority to make their decision, decisions over a given resource? This is the important um, angle of a commons perspective. Peter Leinbow, an American historian who has, been writ who has written uh, thrilling books about the commons and the history of commoning, um, he usually says, the commons are better described as a verb than with a noun, because they are a social process, the process of commoning. That is, subjectivity is back. We cannot objectify things. We cannot talk about the commons as if there was a panacea, a certain set of rules or a certain institution that works for all kinds of resources and all different social and cultural circumstances. That is not the case. The commons is not about um, objects, about objectivation of things. The commons is not about measuring and counting and making ends meet in a mathematical sense of the world, word. The commons is about taking into account that our world is complex and the needs we have, the uses we want to make of a certain resources, the purposes, the different purposes of different people we have to deal with, uh, obliges us, forces us to deal with subjectivity and to deal with complexity. Because the commons is not about things, it's not about the resources, it's not about objects. It's about us and about the way we relate to each other. And commoning means making sure that nobody is left behind because nobody wants to be a sucker. It is about trying to find ways in everyday life to work together for a free and fair future. That is not a small thing. A fifth basic for me is that doing this while finding the rules and the norms and the ways to deal with each other with regard to the share of a collective resource 
we will come up with a very different solution. There's no panacea. There is no one size fits all model. There's nothing we can simply take and say, this is a set of rules, these are the norms, and these are the institutions that will work in whatever circumstances. Instead, and remember this, each commons is one of a kind. Basic number six, the so-called tragedy of the commons. The tragedy of the commons is a term coined by a famous biologist, Garrett Hardin, in an article um, published in a science magazine in 68 and um, he dubbed it tragedy of the commons basically saying that wherever a group of people uses a collective resource freely it will end up in a tragedy. He literally says freedom in the commons means ruin to all. Well Gerrit Hardin has been criticized in direct conversations, by the way, um, by Elena Ostrom and a lot of scholars uh, who can clearly show that the commons work everywhere. So who's right? You can seek for the answer in the literature. Gerrit Hardin, who said freedom in the commons means ruin for all, or Elena Ostrom, who has done with many scholars of different generations, research, field research in many countries of the world, coming to the conclusion that the commons work everywhere. You may find it out in the literature. And you might find out another thing. What does people say or what does Elena Ostrom say about the so-called drama of the commons? Because she states there is no such thing as a tragedy of the commons, but there is a drama of the commons. And even other authors, authors talk about the so-called comedy of the commons. This is a term um, which uh, is tied to the debate about cultural information and code um, and knowledge as a commons, and it's a quite useful concept to deal with the complexity of the commons debate. And finally, you might be interested in exploring um, the so-called tragedy of the anti-commons, a term coined by Michael Heller, a scholar from the US, and uh, find out that even though everybody remembers the so-called tragedy of the commons, there is no such thing but there is a drama, a comedy, and a comedy of the commons and a tragedy of the anti-commons. And finally, I'd say my last and seventh basic to know about the commons is that it is important to understand the commons not only as a social process, a process of commoning, which is, so to say, a never-ending story of ongoing negotiations in everyday life because all of us need to share collective resources. There's no other way to reproduce our livelihoods than sharing natural resources, knowledge and information. But to remember that there is something generative in it. Because out of this process of sharing, what do we do with those resources? We produce something we need to make a living, right? So there's a huge debate going on considering the commons as a productive and generative process. Jochai Benkler, for instance, was talking about the so-called commons-based peer production as a different mode of production based on the commons which are freely shared and used by everyone. I prefer talking about commons creating peer production, which means that it is important not only to take from the commons, but to, rep to reproduce commons and to give back to the commons. Because whatever productive system we might have, at the very end, all of them being it, 
plant economy or a free market economy or a commons based economy. All of them at the very end need to make use of our shared resources.